All right, it's time for a special edition of Throwback Thursday when each week we take a moment to relive an important period from Buffalo's past. Today we're focusing on the complete transformation of a treasured historic building downtown. At the corner of Washington and Clinton Street sits one of the city's last standing French Renaissance style pieces of architecture. Once a bustling city within a city, it has recently been restored to its original glamour. From the day it first opened in 1904, the Hotel Lafayette gave Buffalonians something to brag about. The New York Times wrote about its opening and how it was one of the top hotels in, because of all of the wonderful, um, beautiful accoutrements. Louise Bethune was the first professional woman architect in the country. And this was her masterpiece. She had designed many buildings in Buffalo, post offices and um, industrial buildings. This was the only hotel she ever built, and it's known as her opus because this was the peak uh, for her. Bethune's masterpiece sat neglected for decades until developer Rocco Termini took it over and launched a full revival in 2011. Photographer and writer Jackie Alvarella documented the entire process. I came in the first day and I saw what a wreck it was. And I had seen some of the blueprints and some of the plans of, of what they hoped it to be. And I was just hooked. I came here just about every day for the full year, about a year and a half while it was under construction. Alberella was right there as local craftsmen put the place back together room by room. She's published her behind the scenes photos in a new book. People come into the hotel now and are very impressed with how gorgeous it is and how beautiful it is. But they can't, I don't think they can really appreciate all of the work that was done unless you see the before pictures. The Grand Ballroom created some of the biggest challenges for the crew in this restoration project. Now that it's complete, it is one of the most sought after venues for weddings and special events here in Western New York. The entire ceiling was placed, uh, every beam uh, in that ceiling had to be replaced. Um, the floor, which was a hardwood floor, couldn't be saved. So that is, I think, the only floor that was replaced. You know, electrical, lighting, um, uh, a lot of the decorative plaster work in the corners and in the sides had to be also refabricated and redone. And then of course it had to be repainted. Down the hallway in the smaller crystal ballroom, crews chipped the white paint off the original chandeliers, restoring them to what they looked like when the hotel first opened. They removed a dance floor and replaced the original one, tile by tile. Even the, uh, the massive curtains that are in the windows here have been redone in a style and color palette that matched the original color palette that was in the room. One of the things about the Hotel Lafayette, and people do say this, is it's beautifully bright. And when Louise Bethune designed this hotel, she designed it with all of these windows that would let natural light in everywhere in the hotel. That was one of the things that she wanted. What people have to remember is this hotel really was an inch away from the wrecking ball. This could have very easily just been demolished um, and, and it's saved and it's going to be here probably for another 100, 200 years. This building has such history and is so connected to so much history in Buffalo. Stop, you know, someone on the street and if they're older and they probably had their wedding reception here at the Hotel Lafayette. Stop somebody else on the street, they probably came here for a conference or, or stop somebody else, they, they probably were regular at the, at the Lafayette Tap Room. So this place, you know, has a rich history that serves Buffalo and now it's serving a whole new generation of people who will make history here. And the hotel has been back open for a couple years now, but now this book that documents the entire restoration project is available. You can get it at the hotel itself or at Barnes & Noble, um, and it just goes room by room, section by section, and shows the before and after pictures. And you really do learn a lot about this piece of history that's right downtown and back open. And you know, there's so many different buildings downtown or in the surrounding areas that are going through these restoration processes, and it's so nice to see them documented in a book that you can kind of keep on your coffee table and pull out when you want to learn a little bit more about it. I think it it's great to have that process seen and, and put down in print. And appreciate what it once was. You know, we mentioned at the beginning of that piece when this first opened, the New York Times wrote about it. It was one of the must-see places in all of the country. And one of those reasons was every room had, these were the anemones, they had running hot and cold water and a telephone in every room. That was very, uh, that was a very big deal at the turn of the century to have those things in a hotel room. And you were saying you found out during the course of the interview that a lot of the craftsmen used to do this restoration are a little bit older 
other because they're skills that you don't find in buildings these days. Yeah, especially the things like the plastering. These are not techniques that are used in brand new buildings in construction projects. So that they um, they found all local craftspeople though who had these skills and they were able to put them to use in the Hotel Lafayette. And they're just they're still they still live around here. They're so proud of the work that they did. Um, and you know, Jackie said she runs into them. In fact, while we were filming the story, there was a gentleman there who was working on the hallway on the plaster in the hallway. So they're very proud of the work they did, as we all should be. And we're excited to see what's going to happen to the next building that's going to go under this transformation. Absolutely.